Philip to Evelyn, Monday, October 19th, 6.10 p.m. My dear Evelyn, received yours of the 16th this evening, and most welcome it was, too. It had the effect of dispelling some of the gloom that covered me like a shroud since Saturday. Whenever I let myself think of the distance that separates us, my lovely, it's almost more than I can bear. I never dreamed it would be so hard to take, but I'm starting to pull out of it all right. We're kept pretty busy drilling most of the day, and I'm paying strict attention and giving it everything that's in me. In this way, I keep myself from thinking of you and everything else. In the evening, while I'm writing to you, and at nine o'clock, when I lay in my bunk and wait for sleep, I indulge in some plain and fancy reminiscing. Know something sweet? They're just as sweet and tangible memories as they were actualities. I just close my eyes and live them all over again. Your voice and inflection on the phone when I called Friday, it may surprise you to know, both thrilled and amused me. Thrilled because, page two, it was your voice and amused because you sounded as shy and hesitant as the veriest maiden. It's a great compliment. I consider it so. When a husband of 19 months standing still has the power to make his wife feel like and act like a thrilled schoolgirl, you were so sweet that had I been there, I would have eaten you on the spot. I hate to throw cold water on your aspirations, baby. But this desire of yours to come to Columbus is impractical, to say the least, from several angles. Although I want more than anything in the world to be near you, and it hurts like hell to give up the idea, I still have the willpower to say a very definite no to your suggestion. We have the newcomer to consider, and I wouldn't jeopardize his question mark chances for what you must honestly concede are purely selfish motives as far as we are concerned. Besides, you're so late in your pregnancy, I'd be a nervous wreck in no time at all if you were so far from home and the safety that lies in being close to the dock and the hospital. To say nothing of the cost involved, I can't for the life of me figure out how you expect to raise the money it would take for the trip out here and living expenses for any amount of time at all. Any one of these is sufficient reason to persuade you to give up any thought of coming. Page 3, out here. Believe me, Ev, dearest, it's as hard for me to say when every fiber of me says yes, yes, as it could be for you to resign yourself to the idea of not seeing me for the next eight or nine weeks, however long the baby decides to stay with you. When the time comes, honey, I'll turn this man's army upside down, if necessary, to reach your side. But I don't think any such drastic measures will be necessary. You want me to name the baby? Well, it's so big a responsibility when you think that the name chosen must be retained through the entire life of this person we have created that I hesitate to commit myself. But I have a brand new suggestion. And I hope it pleases you as, it mu as much as it does me. It has everything a girl's name should have, in my humble opinion. I'm only surprised we didn't think of it before. It's so obviously the name. Now think hard, honey. What name starts like the angels and has all the attributes a girl should have? Delicacy or desirable or delectable? Take your pick. Effervescent, lovely, eye filling. Not only that, but what girl's name sounds most like my late page four father's may his soul rest in peace. That's it, Adele. Best of all, Ev, I can actually say it without half trying. It's such a soft, graceful, feminine name, don't you think? I'll admit I'm prejudiced, sweet. After all, it was my brainchild. But if I have any say in the matter, 
and you can bet your boots I will have, Adele Strongman, my daughter's name shall be. And to show my gratitude to a wife who, unlike all others, gives her humble husband the option of naming the baby, I repeat, to show my unbounded gratitude for the unprecedented honor you have seen fit to bestow on my unworthy self, you can name the next one, which I consider proof enough that I love and respect you, my darling, above all others. Good night, sweet mother-to-be, and may your daughter grow to be as wonderful a woman as her mommy. Love to all. Tell Jack N. to write and tell me how he is doing. Your Daffy Daddy, Phil. P.S. My address is on the envelope. Now. P.P.S. Send my laundry, dog tags, empty toothpaste tube, shoe brush, and the kitchen sink. Thank you. Philip to Evelyn, Tuesday, October 20th, 525 p.m. Evelyn, dearest, while the boys are out to chow and I have the barracks all to myself, I thought I'd avail myself of the opportunity. Having finished shaving, bathing, and changing into fresh clothes, and feeling fresh as a daisy, I am all ready to do my daily duty by you, sweetheart. Today was another easy one. The morning was spent in the base theater viewing training films, which wasn't at all hard to take. After lunch, and the food is almost as good here as at Middleton, we killed an hour at mail call. I received your letter of the 15th, which was sent to Swarthmore, Pennsylvania, by mistake. It was the first news I had of Ben being in the Coast Artillery in San Francisco. He's lucky. Poor Milt seems to have gotten a raw deal, though, so far from home and in the infantry to boot. Then we killed another hour waiting for the medical officer to come to our barracks for short arm inspection. We still had an hour until supper time, so we indulged in some close order drill. The sun is very strong here, page two, and we worked up a pretty good sweat in that hour. When we got back to barracks and the rest of the gang scrammed for chow, I decided I'd rather have a bath. Lunch was so plentiful that I had not the slightest desire to eat. I had considered going to the movies tonight, but Ball of Fire is playing. We saw it, remember? So I guess I'll catch up on my correspondence, which is sadly neglected. Yesterday I wrote to Mr. Farron and the girls. Today I'll try to drop a few cards to the Wymans, Browns, Strongmans, etc. I hope, baby, you've been remembering me to the Fromers. Tell them I miss them very much. It's good to know they inquire about me. We still have no idea how or when, if ever, we're going to get our, quote, specialist, unquote, training. But I'm fairly certain that it, we won't be here more than eight weeks or enough to get our, quote, basic training, end quote. Can you tie that? There are some fellows here that have been in the Army for years, Others are veterans of the First World War, and still others have had their basic. However, the routine is the same for all of us, rookie and vet alike. But I don't mind the repetition, if you know what I mean. I better sign off before I start to tell you how lonely I am for you, sweet. By the way, is your dad home yet? And how's he feeling? How are the moms? Until tomorrow then, Chippy, I'll be seeing you in my dreams. Remember 9, your Phil.